Okay, so you know how occasionally a tool, tip, or something in your life shows up that absolutely changes everything? Well, that's exactly what the extension Excalibur is for Premiere Pro. Excalibur comes from the developer Ivan from Knights of the Round Editing Table, and he is the maker of the Premiere Pro extension Watchtower, which was an amazing plugin that could automatically import footage into Premiere Pro and sort it into the appropriate bins. If you haven't already checked it out, I highly recommend you do because that was also another amazing plugin. Now his latest extension is called Excalibur, and boy, can this extension do a lot. Have you ever wanted to apply Apply video effects with keyboard shortcuts? Maybe you wanted to be able to export individual clips on the timeline? Wanted to be able to search your timelines and open it immediately? Well, Excalibur can do that and so, so much more. It is unbelievable. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So Excalibur is primarily a search bar that you can pull up at any time that allows you to type commands and make things happen quickly in Premiere. Think like Spotlight for your Mac, but inside of Premiere. When you first install Excalibur into Premiere, you will need to do a few things. First, come up to Window, Extensions, Excalibur Settings, and then General. Once you're in here, you can change the default shortcut for opening up the Excalibur search bar. By default, it is Option Space, but I changed mine to Shift Space. You can also set a shortcut to open this preference panel, which I would highly recommend doing because you are going to be coming to this panel very frequently. Now that you know how to pull up Excalibur, I'm gonna start going over some of my favorite features that have been huge time savers. One of the greatest features Excalibur created was the ability to apply video effects to your clips. I can pull up Excalibur, type the name of an effect such as Warp Stabilizer, and once I hit enter, the effect is being applied to my clip. This also works with custom presets that you have made yourself. Now, while that's great and something we've all wanted for a long time, one other thing Ivan made available was the ability to map effects to keyboard shortcuts, which is something I know everyone has wanted for as long as I have used Premiere. So if you come up to your Excalibur settings and find an effect that you want to map, you can click the little box and type in the shortcut you want for that effect. Now when pressed, it will instantly apply the effect to your clip without having to use the search bar. So for things that you use very frequently, you can map a shortcut and then less common ones you can use the search bar. You can also fuzzy search effect names. So instead of typing warp stabilizer, I can type WS and Excalibur is smart enough to know that you want warp stabilizer. I could also type LC and it will pull up any effects where the first word starts with L and the second starts with C, such as Lumetri Color. Now I'm gonna dive into this a little bit more later, but just be aware not to map the shortcuts to single keys such as A, W, S, E, or anything that is a single letter key press. You need to map it with a modifier key, otherwise this will cause issues. But we'll expand on that in the bugs portion of the video. Another fantastic feature is the ability to change position, scale, and rotation through the search bar. If I type scale and then hit the right arrow key or enter to go into the submenu, you will see I have two options, set value and add to value. Set value will change the total number for scale, while add to value will add whatever number you type to the current number in the effects control panel. So if I choose set value and type 50, my clip will now be scaled down to 50%. You can also do the same thing with position for setting the X and Y coordinate, as well as rotation, anchor point, anti-flicker filter, opacity, and volume. For volume, it will place a keyframe down on the timeline. This is not using the audio gain panel to add or subtract volume from the clip. So you'll notice that the max volume I can add on the timeline is only 15 decibels. Now something super cool you can do is you have the ability to highlight multiple clips and change their position, rotation, and scale, and so on, all at once. So I have all of these clips right here which are scaled at 50%. What I can do is highlight all of them and type scale 100, and now you can see they are all scaled up to full size. By default in Premiere, if you were to try and select multiple clips and then go to the effects control panel to make changes, it would be blank and not allow you to adjust multiple clips at once. So while being able to type those adjustments is amazing, the developer took things a step further and allows you to map these to custom keyboard shortcuts. If you open the Excalibur settings and then go click user commands, this lets you create custom macros which can perform multiple steps at once. There will be an entire section in the video to demo this later, but for now I will show you the basics. Once add user command is clicked, you can name your command. I'm going to name it scale minus 10%. Now click add command and type scale. From here, you can choose the amount you want to scale every time you use this preset. I'm going to use the value minus 10% and use add to value instead of setting a value. Once you're finished, 
finished, come over to the effects on the left and give it a keyboard shortcut. Now really quickly, I'm going to create the same thing, but instead of minus 10%, I will have it increased by 10%. Now that I have these created and mapped, if I go back to the timeline and press these shortcuts, you'll see that I'm able to control the scale of my clips just by pressing these keys. If you want, you can also do the same thing for position, rotation, and so on, which would allow you to quickly nudge and adjust your clips without ever having to use the effects control panel and the mouse. This feature alone makes Excalibur more than worth the money, and this isn't even the tip of the iceberg of what it can do. I think we've all wanted the ability to be able to move our clips around without needing to use the effects control panel or using the mouse. A handy little feature that Excalibur has is the ability to change workspaces by typing change workspaces or just CW for short. Once you hit enter, you'll get a list of your workspaces that you can choose from. I personally have custom map shortcuts for my workspaces, but for those of you who don't, this can be a great way to quickly switch around your workspaces without having that bar that Premiere provides, which takes up way too much screen real estate for my personal taste. I've never been a fan of having that in my workspaces. In addition to this feature, you can type open sequences or OS for short, and this will show you a list of every sequence that you have available and allow you to quickly open them. At the moment, you have to use the arrow keys to select the sequence you want, but I've spoken to the developer and asked if he could add a search bar so that you can type the name of the sequence that you want for faster filtering. And the reason I think this would be beneficial is because if you have lots of nests inside of your project, those are all considered sequences. So you're going to have to filter through all your nests and then find your real sequence. Rather, if you knew the name, you could just search it. So hopefully that'll be added in the future. Before Excalibur, the only way to quickly move to specific time code on your timeline was if your keyboard had a numpad, and then you could type the time code you wanted to jump to. But if you don't have a numpad like me, you were just out of luck. Now with Excalibur, you can simply type where you want to jump to and hit enter. For example, if I type 24, this will jump me to the 24th frame of my timeline. If I want to jump five seconds in the video, I can type five and then the period. If I wanted to jump five minutes into the video, I can type five period period. If no period is typed, Excalibur assumes you want to go to that frame in your timeline. A single period tells it that you want to move that many seconds, and two periods tells it that you want to move that many minutes. So three period period would be three minutes. When you type just frames or a number with periods, it will jump to that specific time in the video. So three period period will go exactly to three minutes. Even if you are at one minute in the video, three period period will take you straight to three minutes and not take you to four minutes. It's not adding to the time that you're currently at. You can also just type numbers into the search bar and hit enter to jump. Excalibur reads the numbers you type as hours, minutes, seconds, frames. So if I typed 10, 30, 0, 0, this would jump me to 10 minutes, 30 seconds, and zero frames into my timeline. If I typed 5, 34, 14, this would jump me to five minutes, 34 seconds, and 14 frames into the video. You can also use math symbols to help move around your timeline from your current location. If you want to jump 20 frames forward from where you currently are, you can type plus 20, and this will move you 20 frames forward. Or if you wanted to go backwards, you could type minus 10, and this would move 10 frames backwards from where you currently are. If you didn't add a plus or minus, this would just jump you to the 10th frame of your video. As some Someone who has rarely had access to a numpad, this is a very awesome and welcome feature that I love. Being able to quickly move 5, 10, 15, or however many forward frames precisely is amazing for placing keyframes. Do note, if you have a clip selected when you try to make a time code adjustment, it is also going to move that clip with it. So if I select this clip right here and then type plus 24, it's going to move the clip forward 24 frames. This is something you'll want to be aware of because I found that I accidentally had clips selected a lot when I was using this feature, and then it would kind of move my timeline around in ways that I didn't want it to. If you've ever wanted to be able to quickly solo tracks for previewing audio or video, now you can do that really easily. Select the clips on the tracks that you would like to solo, and then open Excalibur and type solo. And this will quickly mute or hide every other video track that is not the ones you selected. Before Excalibur, this would have been a painful process of clicking on all the eyeball icons, all the mute buttons, and then later having to manually undo it all. Excalibur makes this process just take a single second. Once you're done previewing, you can type solo again, and this will unsolo all of your tracks. Now on the same note, you can also lock tracks the exact same way. You can select clips on the tracks you don't want to lock, 
type lock, and now it will lock every track that wasn't one of the ones you selected. Now, if you want to unlock these, you can type lock again, and you will see it says unlock. Many Premiere users have wanted the ability to paste to the highest available video track for years, and now we finally have that option. If you copy a clip and then type paste, you can go into the submenu, which will give you multiple options. Paste to the same track, which will paste to the same track you copied the clip from. Paste to highest available track, which will paste to the highest available track that you have enabled. By default, Premiere will always paste your audio and video to the lowest number available. If you have V1, V2, and V3 turned on, Premiere will paste to V1. If you disable V1, Premiere now pastes to V2. With Excalibur, if I have V1, 2, and 3 enabled and type paste and choose paste on the highest available track, what is also really nice is instead of having to constantly type paste and then choosing paste to highest available video track, you can make your own user command to do this with a keyboard shortcut. Come up to the Excalibur settings, add user command, name it paste to highest track, and then search for paste. Now you'll get a drop down box asking which option you want it to default to. Once selected, now go give the command a keyboard shortcut. Once finished, you can go back to the timeline and press your shortcut to immediately paste to the highest available video track. Pretty freaking awesome if you ask me. A reason that so many people wanted this feature is because a lot of times you're working from the bottom track upwards. So pasting on the bottom track often doesn't make a lot of sense if you're pasting B-roll or graphics because it's gonna overwrite your A-roll. So now we have the option to get around that. As of Premiere 14.7, one of the things Adobe added was a quick export feature, but I'm sorry Adobe, Excalibur really took this to a whole nother level. There have been so many things in the past that I have wanted to do with exporting videos, like saving a specific spot that I want to export the video to, having custom preset names that I can use, like naming the video after my sequence, because these are all things I don't really wanna have to do. I just wanna choose my preset, click export, and be done with it. With Excalibur, this is now possible. So first, if you just wanted to do a basic video export, you could set your in and out points, type export, and then hit enter to go into the submenu. From here, you'll see the location of where the video will be saved, and by default, it will export the video to the same location that your project file is stored in. So if you're like me and you have project templates where all your assets are in one master folder for that project, this is an absolutely amazing feature because now I never need to tell it where to save my videos again. It just knows where to go. But if you do want to change the location, you can hit enter on the file path box and then it will bring up a finder or explorer window to choose the destination. After this, you will have your list of custom export presets. So if you have created none, this list might be empty. If you plan to use this feature, I highly recommend that you make custom export presets for the common type of exports that you do. As a small side note, if you create a preset for it to show up in Excalibur, you need to restart both Premiere Pro and Media Encoder for it to show up in this list. I had created presets and they weren't showing up and it took me quite a while to figure out that I probably just need to restart Premiere and Media Encoder. Now that's pretty awesome stuff, but we're not done yet. You can also export selected clips as individual clips another feature that users have wanted for a long time. What you can do is select a bunch of clips on your timeline and Excalibur will figure out how to export each clip individually. One of the easiest use cases I can use to explain to you is when working with stock footage. You'll often have a timeline full of various clips and you want to export each one individually to upload to your stock sites. Well, by default in Premiere, you would have to set in and out points around the first clip, queue it up in Media Encoder, set in and out points around the next clip, send it to Media Encoder, and keep repeating this until you've done it with all of the clips. Now with Excalibur, I can highlight everything, type export selected clip, choose my preset, and then they all start exporting in Media Encoder. It is absolutely mind blowing to me how easy Excalibur makes so many of these things that were just annoying before. If you had 20 clips on your timeline, this may have taken you well over a minute. With Excalibur, this literally takes you one second to do. Before we dive into my last favorite feature of the export section, do be aware that currently the export individual clips feature does not export audio. I've told the developer it would be nice to have the option to export audio as well, so this might come in a future release but for now it will export the video with no audio. Now let's talk about the last export feature. Open Excalibur settings and come up to add user command. I'm going to name this PPG 1080p. Now click add command and search for export. This will pull up a box with a few options. First, you can choose the default name that your files will export with. 
By doing this, you never need to name your files upon export. If you click the list, you're going to see a bunch of options. If you choose sequence name, Premiere will name the file after the sequence you are exporting from. Project will name the file after your project file's name. And then you can also add version number, date, and time. So what I like to do is name the file after my sequence and then also add a version number. So whenever I export it, it will name my file with the name of the sequence along with the version number export. Now I always know what the latest file is because I'm not naming it something stupid like final, this is the real final, I promise please that this is the real final, best final real. Now I'm sure we've all been there and done that. Let's stop doing that. Next, you can choose the preset that this will always export with. Now in this case, I'm going to choose my preset PPG 1080p. For now, I'm going to click OK to close out of this window. Now I can set my in and out points on the timeline. Now I can pull up Excalibur and type PPG and this will pull up the preset that I just made. Once I hit enter, the video will immediately start exporting with my preset, my custom name, and place the file in the correct destination. If this doesn't absolutely blow your mind, then I don't know what will. This makes exporting videos unbelievably fast. You don't have to name the file, you don't have to tell it where to save it, and it does version numbers for you and chooses the preset. That's just incredible. All right, so another amazing feature inside of Excalibur is the command called fill frame. And this is something that I have wondered why it hasn't existed inside of Premiere since the very beginning. Anytime you're working with mixed footage on a timeline, like a 1080p timeline, but you're using DCI 4K, if you use the set to frame size command to scale your clip, you'll often get these black bars. If I go over to one of these pictures here and I do set to frame size, you're gonna see I get black bars. What I've always wanted is just have the black bars eliminated. Fill the frame until there's no black bars like this. Cause what I end up having to do manually then is come in here and scale all the clips so they don't have that. And if you have a lot of mixed media, this gets old really quickly. But if I go ahead and reset all these clips, highlight all of them, and then use the fill frame command in Excalibur, that's exactly what it does. It will fill the frame until there's no black bar. And now if we look at these pictures, you'll see there's no black bar on them. Now if I reset them, and I highlight these and do set to frame size, you'll see they all have these black bars. Let's highlight them and then fill frame and boom. All the black bars are gone. Absolutely amazing. One of my favorite features that I discovered right away in Excalibur and I think it's something that a lot of people who use mixed media are going to find extremely beneficial. Okay. So we've covered a ton of awesome features about Excalibur so far. The crazy part is there's still a bunch more that I could demo, but this video is already really long. So I'm going to cover one more feature that is the best part of Excalibur. I've already covered it here and there throughout the video, but that is the add user command. I'm a massive fan of macros and I've been using Keyboard Maestro for macOS for years to do this. I've also been teaching a lot of people inside of my Premiere Pro Guru course. And if you wanna check that out, it's in the description description down below. This is where I teach people how to edit significantly faster inside of Premiere Pro. And I teach people how to use macros. Macros are absolutely incredible, but a lot of time the learning curve for Keyboard Maestro can be a little steeper than most people want. Well, with Excalibur, he's built it into Premiere and made it so unbelievably easy to use. Seriously, Ivan, I cannot thank you enough if you're watching this video because the fact that you have made macros so accessible to everyone is going to be an absolute game changer. Here's one example. If I wanted to create a dip in my audio, I would need to come to the timeline and place four keyframes. After I place these keyframes, I would need to try and lower the audio to the number I want, which can be very finicky. After I get the first one, now I need to get the second one to match it, which can also be really difficult. If you have to do this dozens of times per edit, you know how annoying this process can be. Well, I've created an add user command with Excalibur called audio dip. If I type audio dip, it will place four keyframes and lower the middle two down to negative 15 dB. It also perfectly spaces each keyframe five frames apart. I've mapped it to a keyboard shortcut, so now I can quickly move around my timeline creating audio dips in just one second. Go ahead and try and do that manually faster. So now let's take a look at how you would go ahead and create this. All right, so I'm gonna go over how I made this audio dip command so you can get familiar with creating your own type of user commands. So first I'm going to come up to window extensions Excalibur settings and then from here we'll do add user command and I'll call this audio dip 20 frames 
and then I'm going to add a command. So the first command that I want to add is placing a volume keyframe. So we'll type volume, and then we're gonna say, what decibel do we want it to be set to? Since it's the first keyframe and we're creating a dip, I actually don't want anything to change. I want the first one to be zero. Then I want it to move 20 frames forward before placing the next keyframe. So we're gonna click add command. And to do this, you can't search for Premiere Pro keyboard shortcuts in here. So if I searched select tool, that doesn't come up. But what you can do is type keyboard shortcut, and this will let you type a shortcut that you use inside Premiere. So I'm going to use my shortcut for jump many frames. So shift W, and this is step forward many frame units. And if we go up to Premiere Pro preferences and then playback, you'll see inside of here, there's step forward slash back many, and this is how many frames that shortcut will jump forward. So right now I have mine set to five. So if we want it to jump forward 20 frames inside of that shortcut, we need to repeat this four times. So I'm gonna go back to my Excalibur settings and we will find audio dip 20 frames. So step forward many frame units, and we already know that I have mine set to five. So I'm going to add another one. So shift W and then we'll do this two more times. All right, so now we have four of those. So we're gonna place an audio keyframe and then jump forward 20 frames because each of these is five. For your Premiere Pro preferences, it's going to be different. So make sure you go check that playback menu. After we've jumped forward 20 frames, what we want it to do is add another volume keyframe. And now from here, you're gonna decide how much you want it to dip. In my case, I'm going to do negative 30. Now we want it to jump forward another 20 frames, so I'm gonna to have to add the step forward many frames again four times. All right, so I've got another four, and then we're gonna place another keyframe, and this is going to be another negative 30. And now once again, I have to repeat the step forward four times. And now we're on the final keyframe, which is just another one that will dip the volume back up to zero dB. So here's what our full shortcut looks like right now. It's going to place a keyframe at zero dB, step forward 20 frames, because there's four of these at five each, place one at negative 30, step forward 20 frames, place another one at negative 30, go 20 frames, and then place one at zero. So let's go ahead and see this in action. We'll select our audio clip, audio dip 20 frames, and look how quick that was. We'll do it again. Immediately places those perfectly spaced out. And now if I decided this wasn't long enough, I could just grab it, hold down shift, and then drag it out. And now we have it spaced even further out. But the idea here is that it places the keyframes very rapidly for me and very accurately so that I don't have to do it. Pretty awesome. Another example of a user command that people might find useful is this one. Oftentimes people who sift through their footage on their timeline like to raise up their clips that are good. Sometimes they will even color the clips to help further distinguish them. So I've created an add user command that will nudge the selected clip up and then recolor it. Prior to Excalibur, you would have had to move your hand to the arrow keys, nudge the clip up, and then hit another key to change the color of the clip. Or you might even have to right click your clip and go through the menu. Both of these options are a lot slower and with Excalibur, I can press one key and it does both of those for me. So really quickly, I'm gonna show you how I made it. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to create this user command. Like I was saying, it's pretty annoying having to raise a clip up and then if you don't have label shortcuts set, having to right click, set, and then go to the next clip and keep repeating. That would really slow you down over a long period of time. So what we can do is go into the Excalibur settings and I'll just show you what I've already made. So good clip, recolor, move up is what I called it. And we just used two keyboard shortcuts. And remember, to use keyboard shortcuts that are inside of Premiere Pro, you need to add a user command and call it keyboard shortcut. And now if I want to go up, I'll just type in the up arrow key and this will tell me the Premiere Pro command that it's using, which is nudge selection clip up. And then control two is my keyboard shortcut to set the label color for rows. So just remember that anytime you want to use a Premiere Pro keyboard shortcut, you have to use this command called keyboard shortcut. Otherwise, the only things you can choose from are effects in this list and presets that you have made inside of Excalibur. So anyways, I'm gonna use edit command and then just delete the one I just made since I already had this created. So now if I go in here and I want to nudge a clip up, all I have to do is hit my shortcut, bam, it's up. This one's good too. You know what, I like this one and maybe this one's pretty good so we'll nudge that up. 
and now we're done recolored and now I could glance at my timeline and go, oh, there's all my raised clips and here's all these ones that I specifically colored to denote whatever I want it to. Now here's one that I know many of you are going to love. Now before I demo this, I just want to let you know that this doesn't fully work perfectly yet, but the developer has been made aware of it and he said it's a very easy fix and in the next version it will be out. So by the time you see it, it's very possible that this is already fixed. You know how if you change the speed of a clip and try to apply warp stabilizer, you'll get an error? Lots of people find it annoying to have to nest and then apply it. Well, Excalibur makes this stupid simple. I've made a command called nest, change clip color, and then warp. It will do all of these tasks in the press of one button. Check this out. I literally pressed one key and Excalibur did all of those actions for me. Like, are you kidding me? That's so easy. I'm able to press one button, have it nest my clip, change the color so that I know it is now a stabilized clip, and then have it apply warp stabilizer. That is just so unbelievably fast. All right, so let's go ahead and show you how I made this. I'll pull up my Excalibur settings and then I've already created it. It's called nest warp change color. So right here, we use the nest command inside of Excalibur. So if you search nest, that's all I used right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. The next one is a keyboard shortcut to change the color to my rose color, which was control two. And then I had it apply the effect warp stabilizer. So now, like I said, right now, this is kind of a broken feature, but the developer is working on fixing it. So if I go ahead and use this, you'll see that it nested and changed the color of my clip, but it did not apply warp stabilizer. And that's because after a clip has been nested by Excalibur, it doesn't know to reselect the clip and apply the effect to it. I've made the developer aware of this and he is on a fix. So hopefully within the next version that's fixed and this is something you can actually use, but should be available soon and I thought it was a pretty cool and useful feature to demo. So those are my favorite things that you can do with Excalibur. The thing is, that doesn't even cover everything. There's still so much more you can do, and if you'd like to learn more, you can check out the Excalibur manual down in the description below. Before we wrap up this video, I just wanna talk about some version one bugs slash quirks that you should be aware of. I've made the developer Ivan aware of these issues and he implied that many of them were easy fixes, but just be aware that there may be certain things that the developer just can't change because Premiere doesn't give them the ability to with the API that's available right now. The first thing is that you can't always undo commands that you use with Excalibur. Or if you can use Command Z, you may need to hit the key about a dozen times to undo it. The reason for this is Excalibur is performing dozens of small tasks in order to do the one big task you asked it to do. So this means you need to undo each individual step Excalibur had to do to get back to the original spot. For example, if I try and use the basic nest command with Excalibur and then undo it, I have to press Command Z about a dozen times to undo it because of how many tasks it had to do to make that happen. There are just some things you can't undo as well. For example, if you use the opacity command and try to undo it, it just won't let you. So that's just something you should be aware of. In the future, he may add something that helps get around this a little bit better, but as of version one, these are just some of the things you have to deal with. Now, I alluded to this in the beginning of the video, but when it comes to mapping shortcuts to things in Excalibur, make sure that you always include a modifier that is not shift. The reason for this is because Excalibur can't differentiate when you are typing text versus when you are wanting to activate a shortcut. So if I mapped fill frame to the letter P and then tried to type the word Premiere on this clip, you can see when I hit P, it doesn't type it out, but instead activates the fill frame command. You also can't use shift because many people frequently use the shift key to capitalize a letter when typing. Now, if you use modifier keys such as control, command, or option, you won't have this issue. It's an unfortunate quirk, but this is something that might be out of the developer's hand to deal with. I think this might just be a limitation of Premiere Pro's API. Currently, when applying your own custom Lumetri presets, Excalibur can't carry over the changes from things that have graphical interfaces like curve, curves and color wheels and so on. So if you create a preset that has adjustments made to these and use Excalibur to apply the preset, those changes won't carry over. Things like exposure, contrast, highlights, blacks, and stuff like that all carries over, but if it has that little interface, it doesn't come with it. I don't know why this is. My guess is it's another limitation with Premiere Pro's API, but I'm not positive. Now this one is a pretty big bummer to me, but if you have effects with keyframes that aren't linear, Excalibur isn't able to apply your preset with with those non-linear changes. For example, I have a preset where I can slide graphics on and off screen. To do this smoothly, I've made some curve adjustments to the speed. Well, if I use Excalibur to apply this preset, 
the Bezier curves are not applied. I don't know, again, if this is a limitation of Excalibur or Premiere currently, but hopefully in the future, something can be worked out where it is able to apply your presets with these curves, because the only reason that preset looks good is because of me using those curves. While this isn't a list of every bug or quirk that Excalibur has, it is some of the ones that I think are important to be aware of. Any other bug that Excalibur has currently, I anticipate Ivan will solve in the next few versions. So there you guys go. That is my very long overview of how you can use Excalibur. I truly believe that this is one of the greatest extensions ever made for Premiere. I literally got the email, saw what this extension was, and bought it immediately and could not believe it as I was going through it. I was literally shouting with joy as I used this application because it solves so many issues that Premiere users have had for years. The ability to map shortcuts to effects is worth the $75 alone. Combine that with everything else that it can do and you have something that is unbelievably powerful for editing quickly. I'm excited to see what Ivan will do with Excalibur in the future. And if you haven't already checked out his other plugin called Watchtower, make sure to give it a look because it's another amazing extension that I personally can't live without anymore. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to let me know.